All right, we're three and zero with a push in our last four board member tier package bets on BrockPage.com. And if you want to access today's board member tier package bet, the link for that play is in the description section below. Thousand dollar betters are still up over twenty seven hundred dollars during that stretch. Now we currently have over eight hundred and forty folks who are signed up and active on that website right now. And if you want to know what the difference is between what I do here on YouTube and what I do on my website, I'll explain a little bit more about it at the end of the video. But with that, guys, let's go ahead and dive into some Major League Baseball action. We're going to start with the Athletics taking on the Rays. That's going to be a 1.10 p.m. Eastern start time on Thursday, April 14th, 2022. Tampa Bay's minus 195, totals eight runs. Josh Fleming for Tampa Bay. Cole Irvin for Oakland. And even though Irvin had a rough season debut, it's this athletics lineup that can certainly keep these guys in ball games. The A's currently rank in the top three in scoring, and they're also amongst the best in the American League in homers per nine. Seth Brown has a pair of home runs along with eight RBI. Meanwhile, Elvis Andrews has five extra base hits and scored six times already. Now they're taking on a Tampa Bay pitching staff who's prone to giving up homers. They're currently in the bottom 10 in home runs allowed per contest. And they're allowing just about uh, five runs a game on average. And even though Josh Fleming did get the W in his season debut, he threw only three and a third innings, and he actually comes off a season where he had a 5.09 ERA. So with all that said and done, I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Oakland plus one and a half and the over eight runs in that ball game. All right, next matchup I have for you. It is going to be Mariners versus the White Sox, 2.10 p.m. East. Seattle's minus 2.10. Uh, I'm sorry. Seattle's minus a buck 20, totals nine runs. Logan Gilbert for Seattle, Jimmy Lambert for Chicago. Now Lambert makes his debut here today against Seattle. Really couldn't come at a better time as the Mariners lost their last four straight. And uh, even if Jimmy does run into some trouble here today, he's got a solid lineup behind him who currently ranks in the top three in OPS. And they also average nearly six runs a game. Andrew Vaughn, he hit two home runs and knocked in six. Meanwhile, Tim Anderson, six for 13 with four extra base hits and a dozen total bases. Now, the Chicago lineup's also in the top three and fewest strikeouts at the plate. They're taking on a Mariners pitching staff who allows more home runs per nine than any other team in the majors. Seattle's also in the bottom 10 and runs allowed per game. Meanwhile, offensively on the other side of things, more problems there as well as the Mariners have struggled to move runners. These guys are currently averaging just 2.8 runs a game. And even though Logan Gilbert had a uh, really good showing in his season debut, uh, he's actually coming off a season where he posted an ERA of 468. I think those numbers are probably a little bit more indicative of uh, the way he really is. Now, total-wise, two out of Seattle's last four did get over the line. They've also gone 70% to the over in their last 10 meetings with Chicago. So if you're into historical trends, you certainly want to think about that one there. And speaking of the White Sox, they averaged just about six runs a game in those last 10 head-to-head -head meetings with Seattle. So once again, if you're into historical trends, uh, you know, plenty of uh, overs to go around there. And as far as this year's concern, three out of Chicago's last five outings got over the line as well. I'm going to lean toward the Chicago White Sox plus a dollar in the over nine runs. Next ball game, Cardinals, Brewers, 514 East. Milwaukee's minus 135, totals eight. Brandon Woodruff for the Brewers, Adam Wainwright for St. Louis. The Wainwrights looked really good in his season debut. No one runs allowed and six strikeouts through six innings pitched. Now, the righties officially 1-0 on the year with a .83 whip. And when it comes to offensive production in this one, the Cards are leading the league in homers per nine, and they're also in the top three in scoring. Now, Nolan Arenado's hit three homers and knocked in nine. 
He also has an OPS of 1.658. Meanwhile, Tommy Edmonds, 5 for 13 with an OPS of 1.159. And speaking of OPS, the cards are currently in the top three in the bigs in that particular category. Now, they're taking on a Brewers team who struggled at the plate themselves. Milwaukee's averaging only 3.1 runs a game, and they're actually in the bottom 10 in batting average. Now, the Brewers have also uh, shown little power when they're up to bat as well. They're currently in the bottom three in homers per nine. Now, pitching-wise, Brandon Woodruff's coming off a forgettable season debut. He's 0-1 on the year and walked three batters in just over three innings of work. When it comes to the total in this one, Milwaukee's 4-2 and to the over thus far in the season. They've also allowed nearly six runs a game in their last 10 meetings with St. Louis. Meanwhile, the Cards are 4-0 to the over thus far in the season themselves. I'm going to lean towards St. Louis plus one and a half in the over eight runs. <clears throat> Next contest, it is going to be Wizards versus the Pirates, 635 East. Pittsburgh's minus 130, totals nine runs. JT Brubaker for Pittsburgh, Yoan Adan for Washington. And even though Adan's debut was less than desirable, we're looking at a Washington team who won three out of their last four games. And that includes a series win over the Atlanta Braves. Josh Bell's batting 346 with two homers and six RBI. Meanwhile, Juan Soto's hit a couple of home runs himself, and he also touched 13 total bases. Now, they're taking on a Pittsburgh pitching staff who's in the bottom five in home runs allowed. They're also in the bottom 10 in opponent's batting average. JT Brubaker, uh, he gave up a handful of runs in his season debut this year himself. He's officially 0-1 on the year with a 233 whip. And when it comes to the scoring, three out of Pittsburgh's last five fell under the posted number, uh, especially considering they just, you know, can't score. No real surprise there. Meanwhile, Washington on the other side, they're 4-3 and three to the under for the whole year themselves. I'm going to lean toward Washington plus a buck 10. And the under nine runs of that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup for the show. It is going to be Phillies versus the Marlins, 640 Eastern start time. Philadelphia is minus a buck 15, total seven and a half. Kyle Gibson for Philadelphia, Sandy Alcantara for Miami. Now, Sandy failed to get the W in his season debut. Five walks and five innings of work, 1.60 whip. Meanwhile, offensively, the Marlins are striking out nearly 11 times a game, and they currently rank in the bottom three in OPS. They're taking on a Phillies team who's in the top 10 in opponent's batting average. Kyle Gibson also takes the mound here today. He's 1-0 in the season with 10 strikeouts and a .29 whip. Meanwhile, offensively, the Phillies are in the top 10 in OPS. Gene Segura is 6-for-17, with a couple of homers and a 1.186 OPS. Meanwhile, Nick Castellanos is batting 304 with four RBI and five extra base hits. Now, total-wise, Philadelphia is 4-2 and two to the under thus far in the season. Meanwhile, the Marlins saw four out of their last five fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward Philadelphia minus a buck 15. And the under 7.5. And, and with that, guys, we're going to jump into our quick pick recap. Power to you by my website at brockpage.com, where we are currently 3-0 with a push in our last four board member tier package bets. I like Oakland plus one and a half over eight runs. Chicago White Sox plus a dollar over nine. St. Louis plus one and a half over eight runs. Washington plus a buck ten under nine. With my next and final free pick for the video, I'm going to lean toward Philadelphia minus a buck fifteen. And the under seven and a half runs. And for that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on brockpage.com. Now, if you guys do end up getting a membership here today on my website, just keep in mind, you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you do end up getting a membership here today on my website, you're actually going to get access to that content every single day all the way through the end of April. I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. And guys, if you want to get access to every single bet that I give out on my website, you're going to want to think about signing up for my board member tier. It's an all-inclusive package 
But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, <coughs> happy Thursday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at brockpage.com.